Hi, I'm Mike Turner, Senior Designer with DG Design, and welcome back to episode three. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be looking at building design variants of our EV concept model to suit different autonomous applications and refining some of the details we've already got a little bit further. So, on with the show. Thanks very much. So at this next phase of the modeling, we're looking at the wheels and tires. Um, I want to introduce a very basic sort of tread pattern to the tire. And I actually, rather than using the basic engineering services, I want to add a little bit of fullness to them just to sort of simulate the, the flotation of the tire. Uh, so I'm using revolve tool to let me sort of revolve the, the wheels. I, I tend to revolve in quarters so that I end up with a, a sort of a quadrant, if you like, that, that lets me sort of see where the wheel center is. So I'll do that in the first instance and then I'll use the duplicate tool to basically build all four sides. It, it's worth remembering in Alias that you know, it's about doing the least amount of work possible. You know, we don't need to model the whole wheel and tire. We can model a quarter of it and then rotate it around or, or less if we can. So in this phase of work, I'm using free fall blend to introduce a basic sort of groove across the tire. In my head, I'm envisaging something very simple like a, like a forklift truck tire. It's not got a complicated tread pattern. It's just got a series of sort of ribs and sort of grip regions within it. So it's about representing that as, as basic things. So again, using free form blend and rotating things around to create the, the quadrants of, of the tire design itself. Then just using a blanking draft surface to just sort of close off the inside face where it meets up to center line. And getting to the point where that geometry is up and running copying that same detail through into um, the two ribs at the, the bottom and the top of the tire, then throwing a basic fillet through. It's just kill the shoulder of the tire a little bit, let you get a highlight on there, which will show up in the renderings and you know, adds a bit more visual interest, makes it look a little bit more realistic. Once that initial sort of quadrant for the tire is defined, you know, duplicate it round to create all four and then mirror through center line to create the opposite half of the tread pattern. And then by rotating that through 45 degrees in this instance, you create something that, yeah, represents a very basic wheel and tire tread. It's not awfully detailed, but it kind of does the job. A few fillets in there on the wheel, just to sort of, yeah, kill that edge, give it a little bit more detail is good. And then we're into just a bit of surface detail I wanted to add. I wanted to hint at perhaps, yeah, wheel nuts, you know, just, just something to give a little bit more life to the design. So. What I'm doing in the first instance is using basic draft, based um, simple circles to start to define the cutout region in that sort of wheel trim that will give us flat space where we're going to uh, develop basic wheel nut models. So just trimming that back, getting to the point where we can just sort of see these individual sort of sections around each wheel nut. So now we've kind of got the, you know, the template for our design. We can mirror that round, duplicate to get the other parts that, that we see throw that around center line so that you start to develop the shape of it. And already that's looking more interesting than just the flat wheel and tire. Maybe put a bit of a dome surface in the middle, sort of like a central hook cap. Yeah, looks pretty good. It's doing kind of what I want it to do. So in the center here, I'm just sort of rotating uh, curves around to create what is effectively going to be a wheel nut shape, which again is a very basic, simple draft. It's not got a lot of detail in it. You don't need a lot. You know, when you're producing these CAD models, to produce initial concept renderings, you don't have to, to model everything to the nth degree, but just adding a few of these little design features will help. You know, and the hint of a wheel look, it will just pick up the light in a render and make it look, yeah, a bit more convincing as a design, a bit more like there's been thought and detail gone into it. And that's half the fun again of playing with Angus. You know, you can you can very quickly produce these details, produce one, regularly share it around, copy it front to back, get all these things in very quickly, you know, you've got a concept that starts to look quite convincing, starts to look quite plausible. So it's about, you know, really using the most of your time just to model the bits that you need and then duplicating it through. And yeah, as a first pass, this is really starting to come together now. I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. So now I'm just putting a blanking face in uh, to close off that end cap front and back. And we, we've got, yeah, the basis for our design here. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking and it's pretty faithful to the sketch. So next I wanted to consider some of these other variants. I thought of this idea for a builder's delivery truck, something that carried pallets. And I'd got a pallet model that I'd made earlier that, that dropped in and I'd obviously sized the platform based on this machine carrying two pallets. But what I wanted to think about was, was this scenario where perhaps there's 
a rider, you know, he's not necessarily driving the thing, but he's he's there as part of the delivery process for unloading and unloading. So maybe he needs a little sort of um, a platform, a ledge. Um, he might be running it with a like a, a a belt around his waist to to sort of tether him and a bum perch. But he, you know, he wants he wants something a platform to stand on, and perhaps a bit of basic sort of weather protection or rollover protection. Not that things likely to roll because it's autonomous, but it's a case of developing that. So it's some basic skins, a fillet for the corner projecting curves on to trim back the, the profile. And then we're into using again the tubular offset tool to sort of build sort of like a bull bar, if you like, that kind of runs around and just frames the edge of it and gives it a bit more sort of solidity and, and purpose. And again, as we said before, you know, in Alias, it's about reusing objects, uh, duplicating their purpose. So again, using the same materials, could put it up over his head to give some semblance of basic sort of, yeah, rollover protection sun protection, just keep the sun off the top of his head. And again, as a delivery concept, maybe that's enough. At this stage, you know, we're floating the initial idea. It's just a case of getting started, getting people on board with the design, getting something you can discuss. The other variant to consider, again, based on you know, the common DNA of the chassis is hinting at this thing being uh, like a mobile shop. So maybe there's a series of shelves in there, which again, could just be very plain our surfaces, skins and drafts just to sort of hint at a display area that, that maybe contains uh, fr fruit, veg, flowers, lunches, you know, it could be parts up in, uh, in a busy industrial park uh, where you go to get your lunch. Um, looking at it a bit further, it's like the idea that this thing could be like an, an EV, like a little sort of uh, vehicle that, that trans transports staff around from site to site. So I've got a, an ergonome in here which we can mirror and again yeah it's small tight space but it, it could be big enough to just do the job so it's a case of starting to use curves to sort of trim things back uh build variants that allow us to sort of see what that bodywork would look like if it's stripped back and here i'm using sort of tubular offset to trim the surfaces back parallel to the fender and start to hint at what this bodywork would look like a little bit of fillet on the corner but again it's not very complicated modeling we're, we're drafting along these edges to just sort of create the hint of a sort of floor plane in there. There's nothing very sort of scientific about the model making, but it's enough to kind of communicate the basics. A few curves in to sort of represent a seat pad. Doesn't need a lot. You know, you put a little bit of angle in there, get a surface in, you can draft off that. You know, throw a few fillets around the edge of it. You've got the basis of a seat. Okay, it's not a proper seat design study, but it, but again, at concept level, while you're communicating the basic intent, you know, it's enough. It's enough, just get those surfaces grouped, run a fillet around the outside of it, soften it, make it look a bit more like a cushion, it's well on its way. You know, the design process it, it goes through many iterations to get there, but in the first instance, it's just about that initial visual communication to communicate the idea, get people on board. So you, you've got the seat in there. And again, it's what we can do to mirror the part, reuse it, take that part, duplicate it. It becomes a backrest. You know, it doesn't need a lot of thought at this stage. It's just about communicating the basic idea and then just trimming those surfaces back so it looks something like you know, it's well on the way you've got the basis of a design here maybe we take those, the general sort of curve profiles and sort of pull that up hint at sort of a grab rail running around the edge of it just to give the um the guy sat in the seat something to hold on to while he's traveling give him a bit more confidence so again it's a case of duplicating the existing curves running a little bit of a fillet around there and again your basics yeah pull it up use a little bit of tubular offset use that tube tool um to put the curves in extrude it round so that you're creating that sort of grab handle profile. Again, we're not into the detailed design, we're just mapping out the basic curve sets that will be used. And this is, for my mind, good enough for what we're doing now. There's the, the grab rail, that looks fairly convincing. So you can sort of position it in, get his hand something light, maybe you want to move the arm position so it's sort of sat as if it was on top of the grab handle, just sort of resting there. Uh, the design's working pretty well. You know, it's, it's enough to communicate the intent, get the shades of the signs, gets to the point where you can sort of mirror that detail across and you know very quickly you know, we've built that other variant we've got something that will work in principle in terms of communicating the design it gives us something fairly convincing to look at so looking at this design a bit more i thought it could feel a little bit more open so that you've not got a solid bulkhead when you have got people in that seated position and a bit more like come through so what i've done is i've used tubular offset and projecting curves on surfaces to start to give me profiles that will allow me to trim back that edge. So by projecting those on, trimming it back, you, know, you create more of an open feel to the design. 
this might not be what I ultimately end up with, but it'll it'll do for now as placeholder to, to just yeah give me a feel for a design that lets lets light in a bit more. And we can just see the character of, of how that would be. And now we're in a position where we've got some of these variants up around you can you can see configurations, you can see different things to do with it. Maybe it's the delivery driver rides on the front of the tour bus. There's different ways of doing it. So at this stage of the design, I like to kind of work backwards and forwards considering these other iterations. So I'm I'm back on with the pallet truck. Uh, I'm wanting to maybe put some little ribs in it, like you'd almost have a pickup truck load bed. So again, using using very sort of simple extrudes and revolves, I'm sort of creating a, a raised profile, a rib profile, which I can then sort of duplicate and repeat use. Just to sort of hint at that sort of utility uh, load deck surface. And I can yeah position that relative to where I've got the... Um, palettes and it looks pretty good it, it just adds visual interest helps make the design come to life a little bit more and yeah it looks a little bit more true to life how it would probably be so here we can sort of see the variance we can sort of imagine how it's going so now it's time to throw a few little fillets at it we don't need to go to town but all these little fillets will just give highlight edges which again in our renderings will just bring it to life a little bit more look a little bit more something like and probably for the pallet truck variant, that's about all you need. Maybe we run the same kind of fillet character just along the edge of the seated variant just to get that highlight, which again, in our images will look really good and we can just reposition things, get things set up right so it's kind of doing what we want. And thinking about the people space a bit more, yeah, we can maybe look at a variant um, that's just, yeah, a little bit different. Maybe we consider something that's a bit more of a, a perspex roof, perhaps, I'm not sure. So you could take the existing roof, you could bring that up and just sort of play games with the shaders, you know, consider the idea that it is transparent. Or maybe we go further and we put a glass region in it. So we're working through it and looking at the variants now, it's all kind of coming together, but I did like the idea of playing around a little bit more with the, the seated variant. In particular, I didn't like this sort of solid black bulkhead. I, I like the feel of something being more open and picking up on the idea of the tubes. Uh, that we got for handrails and things being used to sort of frame the back of the seat that you sort of see through the window. So again, uh, very basic sort of drafted circles to create tube sections, which is then sort of intersect with the uh, the bodywork on the outside so they're not breaking through. Get those positioned, get them intersected. Looks pretty good. You know, it's more interesting through the window to sort of see these tubes running across the back of the seats rather than just a, a bulkhead with the seat cutouts. And that's for me, another useful variant, you know, we can build this, we can compare it to the original, but I like the way that's looking. Um, coming back to the idea of the um, of the roof, yeah, th this idea of it being totally perspex, seeing too much, you get too much solar gain on it, but maybe we put a, a portal in the roof, like a sunroof. Um, so again, we're just sort of projecting curves on, offsetting them to create what we want. And maybe we don't make it a uniform offset, we scale those curves slightly so that you've got region almost around the outside that's a gasket, then you've got a region of obscuration and, and the glass within it. It doesn't have to be completely parallel and uniform. But the character that looks interesting. You know, may, maybe it could be something different again. Maybe it's got a solar cell in it to help recharge the ceiling. But the character of it's nice. Coming back to the flick, maybe we do something that's a bit more pronounced rather than like a chamfer. So I've used um, freeform blend here in the first instance, but it looks a bit severe and harsh. So I've trimmed back those edges further to just let the freeform blend be a bit more relaxed and yeah that's kind of looking okay as well that's kind of doing what we want it to do um, so it's really then a case of sort of yeah drawing curves on to trim the edges back so that we can then use freeform blend again to just give us that transition that runs all the way through so you get a, just a softer roof feel looks a bit more integrated look a bit more purposeful and generally the character that's yeah looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with that uh, it certainly looks better for having the more sort of generous flick and it just yeah adds to the character of what we've got going on in the design so our variants are pretty much there and we can start to think about visualizing our intent now that's doing what we want it to do so now we've got the data into vred i'm pretty happy with it you know the tweaks and additions we've made along the way to our detail interest compared to the original sketch you know, really helped bring it to life but i think we've captured the principal character of it but the nice thing is now we have got it in Vera is that we can visualize the whole product family lined up so that in a single image, you can just take it in in one go and you can, at a glance, take in what the concept's about, understand the principles of it. And yeah, it's, it's quite a nice little result. I'm very pleased with how this, this little study's come out. Okay, so that concludes episode three. 
I hope this show helped give a few pointers as to basic AIS construction techniques and workflows. Um, feel free to join me again in episode four where I'll be giving a high level summary of the workflows I've been demonstrating in these videos and giving tips on further software usage. Thanks very much for watching.